do we do? Um, so we do recruitment using machine learning. We've been doing various products in the recruitment space for a bit, CRMs, like slightly more clever recruitment software, and now we're doing even more clever recruitment software, and we've rebranded ourselves and some tailored the data. Um, because we do machine learning have to be like the next uh, CRM. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our product. So what's our aim? I aim is to create the best recruitment system for finding, sourcing, and ranking candidates. So the problem is, as a recruiter, you get a job. You have an enormous amount of people in your database. You have an enormous amount of people on the web that you know about in your little notebooks. And you want to find the top 50, top 40 candidates to start focusing on in order to send out the top five back to your client, to the company. You might have 80, 90, 100, 200,000 CVs in the database. You type in Java developer, you get 20,000 back. It's a long search. You start doing another complicated Boolean search, but not if this keyword, but if this keyword, and you start stepping through. The idea is to take away that process. So instead of spending three hours searching your database, we will deliver you your top 50 shortlist in a few seconds. You just start stepping through them, or the ones you want. Job done, shortlist. So you can focus on the candidate, the client, not the, uh, the Boolean searches. So, oh, this is from our pitch deck. It's a little <laughs> vague. Um, <laughs> so what's the idea? We have multiple data sources on the left. Uh, your CRM, where you have CVs, you have placement history. Your, what we call research. This, I'll come back to that. That's our research tool that is within our browser. We do our CRM. We also do a standalone product that you can put in your browser. And as you're searching the internet, you're building up a small CRM outside your normal CRM. So as you're searching through the internet here, you'll go out, you'll see, oh, you're looking at this LinkedIn client, uh, candidate, we'll go out and find the information on the web about his social profiles, etc. more information. All this information we feed into Octavia, our machine learning model, that constantly trains, constantly learns from what's going on in your CRM the placement you're making with people getting rejected, and the information you're looking at on the internet. Then eventually, when you get a job spec, you pass it into Octavia, Octavia thinks. Got some <laughs> clever stuff on the right, and it spits out the kind of the job list. The idea being that this is an ongoing loop all the time learning. As you're putting in data, we're constantly adjusting our models to your population of CVs. Now, it's going to get a bit more technical. So how does the Octavia thing work? Um, so we are using a variety of different methods in the machine learning space. Um, at the very core, we use old school statistical machine learning models. It's called LDA, it's like a particular generative model for looking at text documents. We, we use these at a very large scale on a CV, whole CV population, plus our own CV population. We build up a very large model across many, many CVs. We're constantly training this model in a sort of reinforcement loop. So we are adjusting, constantly adjusting hyperparameters to the uh, places you're making, how you're placing the people. So we learn all the time from the people you, you're placing, the people you're getting rejected, the people you don't like. We do some uh, neural network, some standard NLP stuff on each individual CV. So we'll figure out, looking at each candidate, we'll figure out how long you've been in your current job, what's your typical patterns. So this is all down to NLP techniques. We're using some neural nets to extract the features of the CV. Because you can come up with all these crazy regular expression rules, but they, we mix them up with some neural networks as well. Uh, extracting skills, like if you've been in a job less than six months, we'll downrange you. If you typically don't move jobs, we downrange you. If you change jobs every 18 months, and you're about to come around to that cycle, we upgrade your bit. We look at your typical way of the skills you're applying in your current job versus old jobs, etc. So this takes away standard keyword searching as well. Makes it more weight. And then we do a little bit of analysis on the entire CD population where we're extracting features which are not based on single words but on paragraphs and sentences. All of this feeds in to a little boot thing that takes all of this, weights them a bit. These are several ones, several inputs coming from <coughs> here. And this is constantly learning as well, based on your lay 
enable data, which is essentially your placements and placements we have in our database. So, an example. Let's say I want to find my best friend. Um, I go to the internet, I type in best friend, I come, there's a page. The first page in Google shows this, the definition of a best friend. So, this is my job spec, I want to find a new best friend. <laughs> um, I start searching through the internet. Go into LinkedIn, go into GitHub, go into Stack Overflow, go into job boards for some reason. Looking for my best friend. As I'm doing this, we're sitting here, learning, seeing what you're looking at, going in the back end, going out, finding more information about the people you're looking at, people you're interested in. This is just how it looks on the block, and you can tag people. Up. Put big data, and great guy on this guy. Um, have a chat on a legend. <laughs> but, um, so it keeps working, building up our model in the back end. Now, it takes a while, and you can write the notes every time you visit things on one, you can rank them all, now I like this guy more. Or, as you've visited thousands of people, we now have, and we put in the data we have, we now have a sufficient model to actually rank and find your best friend. So I go to Octavia, plug in my blog about best friend, and it comes up with this. So this is apparently my best friend now, Alex. Um, I visited Alex, who is hello. Uh, and Octavia came out and said he was 74. It will also give us reasons, I didn't put on here, but give us reason to why you selected him as your best friend. Colin didn't score that well, he was way down. So I found my new best friend. So I found my new best friend. The point I'm trying to make is it works for job specs, but it works for a lot of things. Uh, so where are we going in the future? Well, we're refining our models to particular recruitment sectors, but more importantly, recruitment is just a sales team. Instead of my best friends, I could improve my ideal customer. I could ideal, improve my ideal customer not as a big text block, but as a through a series of questions that lot, I don't want to use a hype word, but that the machine is asking you. As you are as you're refining your ideal customer, you build up the description <coughs> in the back end. We then apply to all your sales speeds. Every sales lead you've ever seen, every sales lead we've ever seen, and we can spit out your top, your top sales lead to contact as a B2B salesperson. We want to integrate this with major CLM. So at the moment, we're relying on our data gathering and our data collection of names. We want to plug it in, we've got to plug it in with Salesforce and a few other CRM. So if you already have Salesforce, you've built up a massive lead database, perhaps you bought a lot of leads up from providers as a B2B salesperson. We will take that, we'll enrich it with data from the internet, and we'll give you the top leads to call that day. And we're working with a couple of people on this as well. So, that was my pitch. And the evening's over. And uh, <coughs> congratulations, you made it this far. <laughs> so, if there's any questions, Octavia. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously you do need to beat stuff. Have you considered um, connecting with the you know, public sector, so local government and the other, some of the other um, organisations that are responsible for driving growth and skills within areas who are desperate for information about where skills are and where jobs are so that they can do things like design transport networks and seed companies and organizations with specific areas to support the local population? Uh, no. um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's not a big data problem. So there are companies that do straight job boards, uh, both for applicants but also for um, jobs that are coming online, mm -hmm. these great company websites. And you can sell that data to government saying this area, this particular location is happening in this, particular, in this sector. Um, but yeah, it's not, we don't, we do data gathering, but it's different in your, as you're visiting things, we do data gathering, not that kind of fast stuff. Okay. It's a bit fair, a couple of people. Mm -hmm. Yep? The open notes section where you, a user could just input the notes, is that actually in live? And if so, like, how do you actually normalize that? Because obviously it's quite free reign and how does, how does the, the machine deal with it? Uh, in general, we deal with all of our stuff gets normalized or put together into a free range text before we even work on it. So we move all forward to anything and we just work on more text. Uh, 
uh, which we then transform a bit. So actually, as we visit different things, we just append it to a massive text block about each person, and we use that for our analysis. So you think your moves are just having like standardized kind of drop downs for like great guy or like nice fella oh. or whatever you want to say about the guy, rather than leaving it free form because it's yeah. become too you're open to maybe if we're going to use those kind of tags more too we don't actually use them it's just the way of you maintain a short list so when you want to do your ranking you can slice it down to the people you already said were very good instead of so. right well uh, so so you said about look at the savings in the room the keywords you should look at the metrics but in your main model you're taking the specification i assume from the job sites. So, as someone has looked at job site specifications before, they ask some really ridiculous things like, like to use experience and brand new technology. So, do you do anything, any analysis on their specs? Oh, as in the job description? Yeah. Spec. Uh, we do a little bit, so we'll do a little bit as we do when they, we look at the companies who work in we, we that's just standard NLP. We can slice, we can slice a, a doctor document, a job, a CV into like these different jobs you've done, the periods you've done them, so we can relate that back to you. But do you do you do that to the spec that you're given from the company? Not really at the moment, no. So we won't do like we won't do the same on the spec to find relationship there. We just look more at because that's basically garbage in, garbage out. So. Yeah, so I mean, it's not a huge thing, as in we can just turn the same technique onto the job spec a bit on, on finding that feature, and then that will become a, a filter. It's a filter, right, on the on top of it. Uh, I, think, I think the point is, is that if you put a crap job spec in, you're not necessarily going to get great data out. But, no, yes, that's but part of the, I think part of the, the Beauty of this is that you get an instant feedback then because you can have a look at the top five candidates. I mean, if you're a crap recruiter, yeah, so if you're, you're a crap recruiter, right? It's not going to help. <laughs> but if you're a decent recruiter or a good recruiter, it's going to make your life a huge amount easier because you're like, all right, this isn't the right information for the job spec because these aren't the right guys. It gives you like an instant feedback loop. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not here to provide awful recruiters with <laughs> magic. It's a it, we want to make recruitment better for everybody as well, okay? as well as contributors. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, um, I'd be kind of curious to know, um, with like candidates who perhaps have a different um, format for like a CV, are there different? So if sort of here you've got in the UK like a certain kind of standard. To the CV or to present your credentials, does it differ? You've got kind of yeah. um, My CV's in MS Paint. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's in, in genius, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there is a bit. I mean, some people do <laughs> horrendous formatting, as in they'll put it in weird footers and headers. You get a PDF where it's just like weird. So when you just pass it to text, you have no idea. Like it just comes out. Uh, or yeah, they embed their name and their phone numbers and stuff in the footers and headers of MS Word or whatever. So when you pass that to text, it just looks really weird. Um, we do have some of that where I think we want to say, and then they're just like, it's just a lot of CV. We could do it better, that, but that's more like text passing. PDF does some really weird things with text fields. Yeah, really yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you do like tables and stuff. Well, even yeah. simple stuff, it, it throws all the text and it messes it. Oh. So, yeah, a lot of you can do that. Make that nice. We're pretty good at getting text out of PDFs, but there's no limit. Hi. Yeah. Someone told me that uh, a CV should only be one page, but I don't think that's true. Because if yeah. the AI is picking it out. Show them more words, so better. Uh, CV. 
Oh yeah, I mean for us it doesn't matter how long it is. It's better, you know. It's better to be longer actually. You get more context. Uh, uh, but we get a better idea. Um, especially if you want to like apply for a job where it's not a skills-based job, but like a. It works best if it's a weak. Let's say a weak job. Uh, what I mean is a <laughs> weak in terms of skills. So it's hard to define job. So it's like a soft job. Skills jobs are much easier, you can actually do skill search. Like if you look for Java Go with most these technologies, you can just search for that database. Or if you're looking for a HR officer or a salesperson with these these skills, it's much better to build a like topic model like we do, and then look at the topic model of the C V to get a much nicer job. But anyway, so I don't think you think that was the question. But um, <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> well um Thank you very much, guys, for coming out tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Hope you enjoyed the pizza. The sponsor provided. Um, <laughs> Someone told me there's still a little bit left. I don't think there's like a pizza and a half or something. And there's a bit more drinks as well. And then just people can just hang out and chat and talk about machine learning and stuff. And like, <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming out.